Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about what are gallstones and how do they cause problems. We hear about gallstones all the time. Gallstones are common and uh, the gallbladder sits under the liver on the right side, right under the rib cage where I'm pointing out. You can see a diagram of that. The function of the gallbladder is to store bile and when the food is ready to be digested, the gallbladder then dumps the bile into the bowel, mixes with the food and helps in the digestion process. Gallstones can be common. There are two words uh, which is uh, uh, prevalence uh, that we are, I'm going to use. Prevalence indicates how common it is. There are two points that I want you to note. Number one, gallstones are more common in women than men. And second, as we age, more of us tend to start having gallstones ranging from about 3% 3, 3 all the way up to 16, 18% that you can see on the slide. The composition of these stones can be threefold. Mostly they are made of cholesterol, that's about 80% about the rest of them can be black pigmented stones which are formed in people who have liver disease like cirrhosis or who have blood breakdown. There are many conditions that cause the blood to break down and what happens is that the liver filters the products of the blood or in the case of cholesterol, if there's too much cholesterol or if one is losing weight, the cholesterol gets packaged into the bile but if there's too much as we will see, it starts getting formed into stones. There's a third variety which is a mixed variety called brown pigmented stones that you can see that sit in the gallbladder which are composed of bilirubin, cholesterol and protein which are sometimes more associated with infections that sit or originate in the gallbladder. Here are what are the risk factors or in other words what puts one at risk for gallstones. Number one is age. Number two is gender, more common in women and it's thought to be perhaps because of the hormone estrogen which women have more than men. Number three is obesity. And especially in the setting of obesity, if one loses weight rapidly, any weight loss tends to put more cholesterol into the bile. There's a, also a condition where in some conditions you have to give food through the IV for a long time called TPN. And the way the TPN is given and the way the bile then forms, more, more stores are formed. Pregnancy can be a risk factor, so repeat pregnancies can be. If people are receiving estrogen therapy, especially conjugated estrogen uh, for in terms of oral uh, contraceptives, things like that. And uh, spinal cord injury, uh, as well as some diseases of the small bowel, such as Crohn's disease, can all make one more at risk for having gallstones. This next slide illustrates how stones are formed. There are three basic mechanisms. Number one, the bile itself has too much of the substance of cholesterol or pigment. So in other words, what we call supersaturation of the bile. The second thing that can happen as a mechanism why gallstones form is for whatever reason, the gallbladder tends to move slowly and doesn't pump things out so that in that small sac, these segment, uh, sediments sit and form stones. And lastly, as we talked about, if there's infection, the infection can form a small nucleus around which the stones start forming. So therefore, there are three mechanisms. Too much of the substance, the gallbladder not pumping, or infection that put one at risk for forming stones, especially in those conditions that we talked about. Now, here's a key point. The majority of these stones, as we talk about the natural history here, don't cause any problems. So therefore, it, it can be left alone. In about 2% of people who have stones, every year there can be an incremental risk of forming or having problems. So what are the problems? On this next slide, I have, uh, if you focus, uh, it's got a number of points and I'll go through that. The stones can, can cause a problem if the outlet of the gallbladder is blocked. The outlet of the gallbladder is a duct called cystic duct and if that gets plugged up with a stone, the gallbladder can get inflamed. The second problem is sometimes 
that same blockage in that small area can block the bile pipe which is right next to it that you can see. Sometimes the stones can slip into the bile duct and cause bile duct blockage. Sometimes the stones can eat their way through the gallbladder into the bowel that sits next to it and form a connection what we call a fistula and super super rare less than 0.1% of people who have gallstones the risk for gallbladder cancer goes up. Having said this though the big picture is if they're asymptomatic we leave them alone. In terms of treatment uh, the treatment can be twofold. If there are only symptoms uh, it can if there is bile duct pain and the stones are in the bile duct, we do a procedure called ERCP where we go through the mouth like an upper endoscopy, make a nick and pull the stone out and clear the duct. After that, the gallbladder needs to be removed. And the same is true uh, in terms of uh, these other conditions that I have. If there's a stone in the duct, it's called cholidocholithiasis. You do the ERCP, you take it out, but then one needs to have the gallbladder out because more stones can get in. Uh, and the gallbladder can then be removed through surgery by means of usually laparoscopic cholecystectomy where through the camera the surgeon will remove the gallbladder. So that's the treatment but again the caveat is the treatment is only if the stones are causing trouble. In other words the trouble will be pain, it could be jaundice, uh, it could be repeat attacks of pain but those are the usual symptoms and these are and the other symptoms that have been out there that patients report to me such as bloating etc are usually uncommon uh, symptoms they are usually not associated with gallbladder disease so therefore i hope this gives you a sense of what gallstones are what problems they cause and how we deal with them and why they are caused more questions always uh, uh, send me a note uh, call or uh, leave us a message on facebook and we'll get back to that thank you for joining us today